Hello everyone. Welcome to the special video on fundamentals of logarithmic table. In this video, we'll try to understand, we'll try to find out the logic behind or the basics of logarithmic table. Why it was developed? What was the need to develop this kind of table or this kind of concept? So let us take the deep dive into the history of logarithmic table. So it all began in 17th century. In the earlier of 17th century, around 1614 to 1620, when uh, John Napier and Henry Briggs came across a lot of complex calculations. So when they needed to do a lot of complex calculations, they both thought of something which could make their calculations easier. And thus they came to a conclusion and developed a table, a logarithmic table, which made their work very easier. And it uh, came up to be a very revolutionary discovery in mathematics. Okay, so let us try and understand how did this began. Okay, so to understand the basics and fundamentals of logarithmic table, you have some prerequisites. You need to know the things, uh, little little uh, rules of exponents to understand the fundamentals of logarithmic. So let us see what do you require for that. Okay, so uh, you know that when we multiply a raised to p into a raised to q we need to add the powers okay we need to add the powers how do you know that suppose if you want to multiply 2 square into 2 cube okay then what do you need to do is you keep the 2 as it is you keep the base as it is and you add the powers and powers are added and it, it becomes 2 plus 3 2 plus 3 and it, it is equal to 2 raised to 5 why does it happen so because uh, this 2 squared it means that that 2 is multiplied 2 times and this is 2 cube it means that 2 is multiplied 3 times okay so totally how many times 2 is multiplied in in this number 2 is multiplied 2 times in this number 2 is multiplied 3 times so totally 2 is multiplied 5 times so in that way if you are given a raised to p it means that a is multiplied p times and a raised to q it means that a is multiplied q times and if you multiply all of them then totally a is multiplied p plus q times Therefore, we get p plus q here. Okay. Now, look at this. Okay. What does this tell? This is saying that if you want to divide something, suppose if you want to divide 2 cube and 2 square. So, how many 2s in the numerator? There are 3 2s in the numerator. How many 2s in the denominator? There are 2 2s in the denominator. And when you cut, then the 2s uh, uh, the which are in denominator, that gets cancelled out with the 2s uh, in the numerator hence we need to take the difference there were two twos here the two twos get cut from here so previously there were three twos here now all the twos from the denominator are being cut and you get three minus two here so that is the reason we get a raised to p upon a raised to q as a raised to p minus q so that is very simple you must have learned in your eighth ninth okay let us go to the next rule what does it say it says that when you raise the power of a raised to m then the power gets multiplied. Why does it happen? So let us try and understand. Suppose if you are saying that 2 square is raised to the power of 3. What does this, that mean? It means that 2 squared is multiplied 3 times. The power 3 suggests that 2 squared is multiplied 3 times. So thus we write that 2 square into 2 square into 2 square. We write 3 times. And when you add this power, how many times? 3 times. It is nothing but 2 raised to 2 into 3. Okay, so I hope you, you, you all have understood the primary rules of exponents. Okay, so it is 2 raised to 2 into 3. So when you see something like a raised to m and the whole power is raised to n, you can easily multiply them. Okay, and it is equal to a raised to m. These are some of the prerequisites to understand the logarithmic table. After understanding the prerequisites to, for the logarithmic table, let us come to the actual problem. The actual problem was arise when they came across this type of complex multiplication. When they wanted to multiply these both numbers, it was quite difficult. While adding this type of numbers was much simpler as compared to multiplication. Till then also it was not much problem. But when they came across such a long and complex multiplication, they really found it very difficult. And in the same time, the addition seemed to be easier no matter how many numbers are added okay but when the number of uh, numbers were increased for multiplication it was quite difficult in that era john napier and henry briggs were thinking upon to find the solution 
in the in the 17th century in the earlier time of 17th century they understood what if i can convert this multiplication into some addition form add them and try to get the answer because multiplication is quite difficult and addition is much simpler as compared to multiplication so when they analyzed this formula when they analyzed this rules of exponent and power they found out that we are multiplying something at that time for that multiplication there may be some value or there may be some uh, way to add them and get the answer okay like when you want to multiply 2 raised to 2 and 2 raised to 3 you can easily multiply by adding the powers of 2 and you can easily write it as 2 raised to 5 so they somehow thought of this way okay if we if you can convert this multiplication into some addition then it would be easier so they try to do research on this when they try to do research they try to find the value what if i write a table in which one base is taken and whenever i want to multiply i'll try to find the value that for what power of what base this is wanted to be multiplied okay so first they wrote the table like if you consider base 2 then 2 raised to 1 is 2 2 raised to 2 is 4 2 raised to 3 is 8 2 raised to 4 is 60 and suppose you are asked to multiply 32 into 64 it would have been difficult for you okay but what can you do is you can convert 32 into 2 raised to 5 you know by this table that 2 raised to 5 is 32 if you want to take 36 uh, 64 you can take it here as 64 as 2 raised to 6 and when you write this in multiplication as 2 raised to 6 you know that this multiplication can be done by adding the powers of 2 and when you add the powers of 2 it it seems to be quite easier and this is equal to 2 raised to 11 now you can get the value of 2 raised to 11 directly from this table and this is equal to 2048 okay so in this way i hope you must be you are you are clear up uh, by now what they actually wanted to do suppose if you want to calculate 32 into 64 it might have been much complex but if you convert it into 2 raised to 5 and 2 raised to 6 then you can easily add the powers and identify what power of 2 is it is and you can take the that power of 2 from this table and you can directly find the solution let us take another example suppose you are asked to multiply 243 into 729 okay or else take some another number 243 into 2187 suppose you are asked to multiply 243 into 2187 you are clear that sir 243 is nothing but 3 raised to 5 okay you must be clear this is the uh, table of uh, when, when the base is taken 3 okay base is taken 3 and you can vary the power and you can get the value so 243 is nothing but 3 raised to 5 and 2187 is nothing but 3 raised to 7 and when you want to multiply this it seemed out to be uh, 3 raised to 12 and you can directly see the value of 3 raised to 12 from this table and it came out to be 531441 and you can write this complex multiplication as 531441 so from here they got the idea that in this way we can convert multiplication in the form of addition and we can simplify our calculations and it it could be done very very fast so from here they got the idea so it was okay till we got the multiplication into the power of something which we have already known okay what if we are not getting the multiplication in that, that way suppose you got the multiplication of 3 into 5 then you can see here that 5 is none of the power of 3 and 3 is none of the power of 5 so how do you multiply this kind of problems okay so while uh, putting some efforts to find the value or find the way to convert this thing into addition they tried to analyze and come uh, came up to some theory what was that theory let us try to understand they tried to analyze that there exist a number 1 which when raised to 2 it gave 2 then there was a number which when raised to 2 like 2 square it gave 4 and there was a number when raised to there was a number 3 when raised to 2 2 cube it came up to be 8 now consider a number between these two numbers like 2 and 4 there is a number 3 now there exists some number between 1 and 2 when raised to the power it gave the number 3 it may be equal to 1 point something 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 and also if you go in if you see in another way there may be some number between 2 and 3 considering 2 point something 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 which will result out to be 
let us check whether this theory really works or not. Okay. So, if you consider 3 as 2 raised to some power and that power is 1 point something something, okay, you have considered this as 1 point something something and 5 is 2 raised to some power which is 2 point something 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 and when you add the powers, it becomes 2 raised to 3.90 kind of thing, okay. And when you actually multiply 3 and 5, you get 15, okay. And now 15 is a number which is greater than 8, that is 2 cube and it is less than 16, that is 2 raised to 4. So, this could be some number which is, which according to this theory, this could be some number which is lying between 2 raised to some power of 3 point something something, okay. And it came up to be the same thing, okay. And when the value of 2 raised to 3.90, this value is nearer to 4, which can give you more confidence that this number is much more nearer to 16. And that is what is shown here, 3 into 5 is 15. It is much more nearer to 16. So, this may be, this 15 may be 2 raised to the power of 3.89 or 3.90 and this number will be much more nearer to 4. So, in this way, they came to a conclusion that this theory may work out. Okay. While working on to this theory, they tried to find the value of this. That what should be the value of this? When it raised to the power 2, you will get 3. What should be the value of uh, the number which when raised to the power 2, it should result 5 or you can say to get the value of 6, 7, 8, of course, you know, it is 2 cube or you want to get the value of 9. What power should be raised to 2? They try to find the values. They try to find the exact value of this. At that time, they realized that we have, we have been using symbols in mathematics to represent some number which we are not able to find exactly. How? Let us see. Suppose you know that root 4 is 2, root 16 is 4, root 9 is 3. What does this, uh, what does this root mean? This root means that this is a number which when multiplied by itself results out to be 4. Matlab, this is a number such that if you square it, you will get 4. What is that number? That number is 2. We know that very well. Why? Because we can find the perfect square root of this number. What if we are not able to find the perfect square root for this number? That is root 2. Can you get an exact number which when multiplied by itself get the value 2? No, it's not possible. But you can always approximate it. What can be the approximation? Sir, approximation is, appro uh, this is 1.414 which when multiplied by itself or which when squared, you get some number which is 1.99999 which is much more nearer to 2. And if you don't want to get this approximate value, you can keep this as root 2. You can use this symbol to show that this is a number when multiplied by itself, it gives you 2. Okay. You are not writing its value as 1.414, but you are symbolically showing that this is a number such that when it is squared, you will get to same way. What is this number? Sir, this number is some number which when squared, you will get 3. So, you are symbolically showing this that when you square, the, when you will square this number, uh, when you will square this number, this will result out to be 3. You don't want to tell the exact value of this number. Same way, these people try to find the symbol or these people try to analyze or represent this number in symbolical form. And in this way, log logarithm came into consideration. And they try to find the symbol for this kind of numbers. That was, what must be the power that should be raised to 2 to get such kind of numbers. Okay. So, let us see how they define logarithm. As we were representing root 3, root 2 in symbolical form and we had the approximate value for this for calculation. In the same way, can we get a symbol for n such that when it is raised to the power 2, it should result out to 3 or 5 or 7 or 9, okay, some other number. So, how can we define that? Let us see. So, they said that suppose if a number is such that m is equal to c raised to the power n, then this is known as base, this is known as exponent or power, okay, and this is the value of m. Then you can define logarithm of m base c as n. So, what is this number log of m base c? So, log m base c is a number such that which when raised to the power c, you will get m. Same way, you can see here. For example, if you want to see if 25 to the power 4 
x is equal to 8, then you can say log of 8 base 25 is such a number such that when raised to the power 25, you will get 8. So, what is that value? That value is 4x and thus we can equate it as 4x. Okay. In the same way, if, we, if it is given like x raised to y is z, then you can say log of z base x is such a value when you raise the power, when you raise this value to the power, uh, when you raise this value to the base x, then you will get the value of z. So, what should be the value of log of 9 base 3? Sir, it is a number which when raised to 3, it should result 9. So, what number should be uh, taken so that when it is raised to 3, you will get 9. So, it is 2. What should we think in this way? Sir, uh, log of 27 base 3. So, log of 27 base 3 is such a number such that when 3 is raised to that number, you will get 27. So, what is this number? This number should be 3 because 3 raised to 3 is 27. In the same way, you can see that what should be raised to 7 to get 49? You should raise the power of 2 to get 49. In the same way, if someone asks you, what power should be raised to 5 to get 25? That is log of 25 base 5. What power should be raised to 5 to get 25? The answer is 2. Same way, if you want to find the value of log of 100 base 10, that means what power should be raised to 10 to get 100? The power should be 2. Okay. So, in this way, logarithm was defined. So, till we, we are able to find the value of logarithm, it is well and good. But when we are not able to find, we just keep it as it is. Suppose if you are writing log of 3 base 2, what is this number? Sir, this number is a this number is something which when raised to 2, you will get 3. What is this number? Sir, this number is, when we raise this number to 2, you will get 5. So, that is the meaning of logarithm. So, I hope so far you have understood the meaning of logarithm. What does log represent? I hope okay, you all have understood this. So, what is the meaning of logarithm? Now, here comes the question of trying to approximate the values. How do we approximate the values or how do we find the values of this? So, now, uh, Henry Briggs and uh, John Napier, they decided that, okay, we can represent uh, logarithm in this way. And after defining this logarithm, now, how we will find the values of this? Okay. So, they identified that, okay, the, if we find some or the other way to find the values, we need to make a table. Okay, we need to have all the values with some base and we can use those values, we can use those approximate values for our calculation. In the same way, right, like we, whatever, the example that we have taken, 3 into 5. Okay, 3 can be represented as 2 raised to some power lying between 1 and 2 and 5 can be represented as 2 raised to some power lying between 2 and 3. And when you add this power, you get some power which is lying between 3 and 4 and it is much more nearer to 4. So, the number two raise, the number should be much more nearer to 2 raised to 4 and it should be far away from 2 raised to 3. And thus, the same thing is happening. So, they found out that their theory is working on well. Now, we have tested this calculation taking the base 2. Let us try and check the calculation taking some other base, whether this is working or not. Okay. So, if you consider 3 into 5 in this way, then the value of 3 raised to 1 is 3 uh, is three itself. So, you can directly put here 3 raised to 1. Now, what is this? What is this value? What power should be raised to 3 to get 5? Like, I want this value. I want log of 5 base 3. What power should be raised to 3? to get 5. What should be this approximate value? Now, I know that log of 3 base 3, what power should be raised to 3 to get 3 is 1 and what power should be raised to 9, uh, what power should be raised to 3 to get 9 that is 2. Now, 5 falls between 3 and 9. So, the value of log of 5 base 3 will be somewhere lying around 1 point something something. Okay. And it should be around midway of uh, 1 and 2. So, I, I have taken the logarithmic value of this as 1.46. Okay. And if I try to add them, then I will get 3 raised to the power 1 plus 1.46. And this will result out to be 3 raised to the power 2.46. Now, what is this value? Sir, this value is somewhere between 3 square and 3 raised to the power 3. What is 3 square? 3 square is 9. 
and 3 raised to the power 3 is 27 and it is somewhere in the midway of this and you can easily identify this may be equal to 50 or else 3 raised to the power 2.46 which is a bit lesser than the midway between this. What will be the midway between this? It will be 18. It is lesser than this. So this thing is lesser than 2.5. What is the middle term of 2 and 3? It will be 2.5. So it is a bit lesser. So after developing the concept of logarithm, they tried to develop some rules of logarithm that how can we do certain operations with logarithm. So the rules are as follows. We have defined uh, a raised to power m. From where did we start? We started from that, that a raised to power m into a raised to power n is equal to a raised to power m plus n. Can we consider a raised to power m as p and a raised to power n as q? If we consider this, that a raised to power m is p, then we can write log of p base a as m and log of q base a as m. What does that mean? Sir, it means that when a will be raised to power m, it will result to be p. And when a will be raised to power n, it will result to be q. So we have considered the same thing. So if we consider this as p and this as q, we can write this in this way. Okay. Now, when these things are multiplied, then the powers are added. Now, if you want to write what will be log of p q base a, means what power should be raised to a to get p q. What is PQ? PQ is the multiplication of this. Okay. So from here you will be able to analyze the power should be M plus N. Okay. To get PQ, uh, what power should be raised to A? The power should be M plus N. And now if you equate this M and N with log P base A and log Q base A, you will be able to get the formula. You will be able to get the feel of the formula that you have already learned in your 9th, 10th and uh, basic mathematics that log of PQ base A is nothing but M plus N where M is log of P base A and N is log of Q base A and it is quite genuine. This is the multiplication of A raised to M into A raised to N. So what power should be raised to A to get this and those powers are M plus N. And what is m plus n log p base a and log q base a. Same way, same thing happens with division. For division, here the things will be in uh, the symbol will change to division. Here the plus will change to minus and p into q will change to p by q. And the same thing will happen here m plus n will become m minus n and you will get the result as log of p by q base a as log of p base a minus log of q base a. So this was the logic behind, behind these two formulas. If you are not able to understand the logic, then also there is no problem. You just have to remember the rule that they have derived from their logic. So as we have seen these two rules, there are also other rules of logarithm that has been developed. As I am making this video targeting a generalized audience, let us not get deeper into the proof of this uh, rules. Okay. But you can surely look upon how the rules work. Okay. So let us see how these all rules work. This rule says that if there is a number in multiplication and we are taking logarithm of that, then you can separately take the logarithm of those numbers in multiplication with the addition sign in between. Okay. In the same way, if you have division of two numbers with base A and you are taking logarithm of that number, then you can separately take the logarithm of those numbers with a subtraction sign in between. This means that log of xy base a is can be converted into addition as log of x base a plus log of y base a. In the same way, if something is in division like log of x upon y base a, you can convert it to log of x base a minus log of y base a. Same way, if it is given such that a number, a, a, a logarithm of taken, a, a logarithm is taken of a number such that it is raised to some power, then you can make the power jump in the left side, jump on the left side. So how does it happen? So a log of x raised to n base a, then this n can jump from here and come in the multiplication of log of x base a. In the same way, if you want to change the base of the logarithm, Suppose it is written log of b base a, we can change, you can change the base to c of both the logarithm by applying this formula which is commonly known as base changing theorem. So this can be written as log of b base c 
upon log of a base c and if you want to take the reciprocal of this logarithm then you can easily interchange the base in the number and you can write the reciprocal of this so let us take one one example for each of the rules so that you understand perfectly if you want to represent log of 15 base 2 you can represent it as log of 15 is nothing but 5 into 3 so you can write this as 5 into 3 and you can write it as log of 5 base 2 plus log of 3 base 2. Base is 2 and you can just separate this number and take their individual logarithm with an addition sign in between. Suppose if you want to write log of 3 by 4 base 2, you can easily write it as log of 3 base 2 minus log 4 base 2. Okay. Then if you are if you want to find the value as log of 3 square base 2 then you can make this 2 jump this side and you can write it as 2 log 3 base 2 okay and if you want to if you want to convert log of 3 base 2 in terms of something base 10 then you can write it easily as log of 3 base 10 upon log of 2 base 10 i hope it should be clear to you and the last but not the least last formula can be written as log of 3 base 2 is equal to 1 upon log of 2 base 3. You can just interchange these two numbers and you can write the reciprocal of this number. So I hope the logarithm rules are clear with you. Based on this logarithm rules they try to simplify the way in which the table can be made and they can simplify their calculation. So far, they have developed the concept of logarithm and they have also developed some of the rules in which logarithm can be manipulated or some operations can be done. Now, it was the time to uh, start making the logarithmic table as we have seen a same type of table in this way. Then they came to a question, what base should be chosen? Okay, what base? Uh, suppose this, this table was having the base as 2. Okay. What base should be chosen to make a unique logarithmic table which will make their calculation easy? John Napier by his side tried to make the table with base E. This is also a beautiful number. It is an irrational number which whose value is approximately is, is it is equal to approximately equal to 2.71 something something something. After that later on uh, the table which was made by John Napier was converted to the base of 10 by Henry Briggs and which is commonly used in our day to day lives. And the logarithmic table at those times looked something like this. Okay, so this is how they tried to select the base and they make the uh, they made the logarithmic table. Let us now understand how did they arrive at the approximate values, the different approximate values of uh, logarithms of different numbers with base 10 and how did they arrive at a conclusion that if you make a certain number of uh, table or you find the certain number of logarithm of some number then you will be able to do the whole calculation. So let us understand step by step. So when you see this type of number let us understand this. How did he make logarithmic table? 10 raised to power 0 is, is equal to 1. When the base is chosen as 10 we can, under, we can represent 10 raised to 0 as 1. 10, so we can write log of 1 base 10 is equal to 0. What power should be raised to 10 to get 1? Okay, so this is 0. Then 10 raised to 1 is 10. What power must be raised to 10 to get 10? The answer is 1. 10 should be raised to 1 to get 10. What power must be raised to 10 to get 100? It should be 2 because 10 square is 100. What power must be raised to 10 to get it should be 3 because 10 cube is 1000. What power must be raised to 10 to get 10,000 and that is 4 because 10 raised to 4 is 10,000 and so on it goes on. Now if you try to analyze, if you want to take the logarithm of any number which is between 1 and 10, then it should lie between 0 and 1. Like if you want to take the logarithm of log of 1 base 10, and here it is log of 10 base 10, 
the value of log of 1 base 10 is 0 and value of log of 10 base 10 is 1. And if you want to find any value, any uh, logarithm of any number between 1 and 10 as log of 2 base 10 or you want to find log of 3 base 10 or if you want to find log of 4 base 10, then it will, it will surely lie between 0 and 1 and the value will be something like 0 point something, 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 something and so on. Okay. Then if you want to find any value between log of 10 base 10 and log of 100 base 10, then it will lie between 1 and 2 and it will, if, if you want to find the value of log of 54 base 10, it will be somewhere around 1 point something, something, something. Okay. If you try to observe th some things, then you will be able to analyze that all the values of logarithm of the numbers which are having single digit will be lying between 0 and 1. Let us understand once again. If the numbers are between 1 to 10, then their logarithms will be between 0 to 1. If the numbers are between 10 to 100, then their logarithms will be between 1 and 2. Okay. So, it is solely dependent on the number of digits. If you want to find the logarithm of single digit number, then it will be 0 point something something. See, you can see this all are single digit numbers. Then the numbers between 10 to 100, just before 100, we will have 99. So the numbers between from 10 to 99 will be two digit number. And for all the two digit number, the logarithm of that number will be one point something something. Okay. In the same way, if you want to find the logarithm of uh, numbers lying between 100 and 1000, what is the number just before 1000? Sir, it is triple nine. And if you try to analyze the fact, that from 100 to 999, all the numbers are three digit number. And if you find the logarithm of this three digit number, it will surely lie between two point something something and it will lie between two and three. So by looking at the number, we can get an approximate idea that logarithm of that number will lie between this and this number. Suppose if someone asks you that what should be the logarithm of 546 with base 10. If you want to find logarithm of number 546 with base 10, you will surely be able to understand that this number lies between log of 100 base 10 and this number lies between uh, log of 100 base 10 and 1000 base 10. And the value of 100 base 10 is 2 and 1000 base 10 is 3. And the logarithm of, so the logarithm of this number will be somewhere around 2 point something, something, something. Or you can easily say that count the number of digits in the number Whatever be the number of digits, you can subtract one from that and if you put a decimal point after that number, your number will be approximately, uh, your, logar your logarithm of that number will be approximately uh, equal to this. Okay. So, so far we have understood this kind of fundamental. Let us understand more that how we can make our uh, uh, making of logarithmic table easier. Okay. So, let us understand few things. Suppose just we have to consider this formula and see whether we can crack some simplified logic to make the logarithmic table. So let us understand how. Okay. So there is a number 6.42. There is a number which is 6.42. There is another number which is 64.2 and there is one more number which is 642. Can I simplify it to some things that I have to find the logarithm of only one number and I can get the value. How can I do it? Let us understand. Suppose I have already found the value of 6.42 to the base 10 and the value of this is k. Then what can I do to find the value of 64.2? I, what I can do is 64.2 can be easily written as 6.42 into 10. Okay. And if you want to take logarithm of 64.2, you can write it as log of 6.42 plus log of 10, okay, by applying this formula, okay, you can apply this formula, log of mn equal to log of m plus log of n. In the same way, log of 64.2 base 10 can be written as log of 6.42 into 10 raised to 1 and this multiplication in, uh, can be broken into the sum of the logarithms. And if you try to identify the value of log of 10 base 10 is nothing but it is equal to 1. We already know the value. So we can write this as log of 6.42 base 
10. Okay. So if you know the value of log of 6.42 base 10, you can easily get the value of log of 64.2 base 10 without actually looking at the table. Can I do the same thing for log of 642? Yes, of course. 642 can be written as log uh, 6.42 into 10 raised to 2, which is 100. Okay. And if you want to take logarithm of this number, you can easily do it by converting this into summation. How do you do that? You can do this by writing it as log of 6.42 base 10 plus log of 10 square is 100, 100 base 10. And the value of 100 base 10 is nothing but 2. So if you know the value of log of 6.42 base 10, you can get the value of log of 642. Same way, let us look at another example and another number. If you want to find the value of log of 3.71 base 10, look at the logarithmic table and suppose this value is A. And if you still want to find the value of log of 37.1, you can convert it to log of 3.71 to the base 10 into 10. Okay, here it is written in this way. You can separate it by addition. And you can write it as log of 3.71 base 10 plus log of 10 base 10. And log of 10 base 10 is nothing but 1. So you can uh, find the value of log of 37.1 base 10 if you just know the value of log of 3.71 base 10. In the same way, you can put this as k and the value of this is 1 only. And in the same way, you can also find the value of log of 371 base 10 by converting into multiplication of log of 3.71 into 10 square base 10 and writing in the form of addition as log of 3.71 base 10 plus log of 10 square base 10 you can make the uh, make this two jump onto the left side and this will remain out to be 10 base 10 which is nothing but 1 and 2 is jumped from here and 2 into 1 will become 2. So here it is 2 and you can add this at the value of log of 3.71 base 10 to 2 and you can easily get the value of 371. So, so far we have analyzed that the number may be of any digit you can convert it in the form of something point something into 10 raised to something. Okay. So there is always a scope of converting a number in the form of a single digit point some decimal values and into 10 raised to something. So what we can do is if we can convert all the numbers in this form, let us try to find the values of this type of logarithms and the other thing which is 10 raised to something, we are very, we, we will be very comfortable to find the value of this. Okay. Suppose if you are having a number which is 542, you can easily convert it into 5.42 into 10 raised to 2. So if you take log both the sides, then you will be easily able to find log of 5.42 plus log of 10 square and the base will be 10. And if you try to analyze, we already know this value. So we are supposed to find the value of only this. Suppose if it is 5.5421, then you can easily write it as 5.421 into 10 raised to power 3. And you can analyze this. Okay. Suppose this is 54215, then you can easily write it as 5.4215 into 10 raised to power 4, and you can do this. So now the question comes till how many decimals should we find the value of logarithm? Okay. You already know the value of logarithm for this. Okay. For you already know the logarithm of 10 raised to 4. But for this thing, till how many decimal points you should try to find the value of logarithm? So for that, they have tried to take a limit. What limit they should take is we will try to find the value of this number till two, uh, till three decimals. Okay. So then they try to find the value of the numbers till three decimals and rest of the things can be ignored. And it is quite obvious. If you are multiplying 54,215 with 64,354, then you can surely neglect this five and four and you can easily multiply this and approximate the value of this multiplication. Let us understand this more briefly. Okay. So if you want to do a multiplication, which is like 5, 4, uh, 
6745. Okay. So far, if you convert this to 5.421 into 6.745 and both of them 10 raised to 3 into 10 raised to 3, then you can easily find that you can take the log both the sides and you can easily find the logarithm of this, logarithm of this and add them, then logarithm of this and logarithm of this and add them. Okay. But if you get a multiplication like 542156 into 715427, then if you try to analyze that after certain numbers, after certain numbers in the starting, the last number does not play any role. You can ignore them also. Like if you want to multiply 5,42,156 to 7,15,427, you can easily ignore 56 and 27 multiplication and you can convert this as 5, 4, 2, 1. And if you take the round figure, you can convert it as 5, 4, 2, 2 into and you can convert this as 7, 1, 4, and you can convert this as 0, 0 and you can put this also as 0, 0. Now, if you try to convert this, this will be nothing but 5.422 into 10 raised to the power 5. And you can convert this as 7.154 into 10 raised to the power 5. So, you can convert this kind of numbers into this approximation and multiply it. So, we can keep the limit of this as till 3 decimal. So far we have understood that we can, whenever we want to multiply something, we can look at the first four digits and rest of the digits can be ignored for approximation. So let us check the number, let us check the numbers of, uh, uh, numbers of taking the logarithm one by one by increasing the digits and try to feel the same thing. Okay. So let us do that. So if it is a two digit number, suppose you take 64 then you can convert it as 6.4 into 10 raised to the power 1. Then if you have 647, then you can convert it as 6.47 into 10 raised to power 2. Okay. If you have 6471, 6471, then you can convert it as 6.471 into 10 raised to the power 3. Then if you have more digits like 64712, then for multiplication, for approximation, what we can do is we can convert it as 6.471 into 10 raised to the power 4. Okay. We can ignore this 2 and make it 0 for multiplication because when we multiply such a large number, this 1 or 0 doesn't make a difference. Still, if we face much more larger number, 6.47127.57, if it, if it is in such a way, then also what you can do is you can do it as 6.471. And it will be multiplied to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And it will be multiplied to 10 raised to 7. Because these things doesn't make any difference when you are multiplying such a large quantity. So, so far we have analyzed any number can be converted into some number which is of single digit before decimal point. Mind it, mind my words. We can convert this to single digit before decimal point and into 10 raised to the power something and after decimal point we need to keep four digits. So, so far we have analyzed that to get the value of logarithm of any number, we need to have the value of logarithm of num one number one digit before the decimal point and three digits after decimal point. So, now we need to make the table in such a way that we will get the logarithms of this kind of terms. So, let us understand what type of numbers we should include to calculate the logarithm and we should make the table for. Okay, so let us understand that. Before understanding that how the logarithm table should be made, we should also try to find out what if the numbers are very small. Okay, so we were, we were very comfortable with finding the value of 64. Let me also uh, do something. 6.4 is of course okay. You can always find the value of 6.4. That In fact, that has to be made. Okay. The, for that only we have to make a log table. But what if the value is lesser than 1? That is 0.64. Then you can say that this value can also be converted as 6.4 into 10 raised to power minus 1. Why? Because if you divide 6.4 with 10, you will get 0.64. Okay. In the same way, if you want to convert 0 0.064, you can convert it as 6.4 into 10 raised to minus 2. 
And if you take logarithm for this kind of number, you all know that if some things are multiplied, then the logarithm of this number will be added. So what you can do is logarithm of 6.4 into 10 raised to power minus 1 will become logarithm of 6.4 plus logarithm of 10 raised to power minus 1 base 10 and here also base should be 10. Now you can make this power jump from here to here and it will result out to be log of 6.4 base 10 minus 1 because minus 1 has jumped from here and it will become log of 10 base 10 which is nothing but 1. So, so you will get this kind of value. If you want to do this, sir, here minus 1 will become minus 2, here minus 1 will become minus 2 and minus 2 will jump from here and you will get this kind of thing. Okay. In the same way, you can break 0 0.00642 in such a way that 6.42 into 10 to the power minus 3. Here also, we only have to take 4 digits which are from starting. Okay. So, if it is a very small number, then also you can convert it in such a way that a single digit is before decimal point and 3 digits are after decimal point. So, now, what is my aim? My aim should be to find the values of logarithm of numbers which are having single digit before decimal point and three digit after decimal point. So let me first try to find out how many numbers, how many numbers of this kind exist. Okay. So if we start, if I start from a number which is 1.000, then I can see that this is nothing but number 1. And log of 1 base 10 is nothing but it is equal to Okay, if you start from this number, then the next number will be 1.001. .001. So, you have to get the value of 1.001. .001. Then you will be getting the value of 1.002. So, you need to find the logarithmic value of this kind of numbers till 9.999. Okay, because after that, you will get the value of 10.000 and you can easily get the value of 10.000 base 10 as equal to 1. Now, suppose if you get, if you are asked to find the value of 11.000, you can easily convert this to 1.1 into 10 raised to power 1. And if you want to find the logarithm of this, you can apply this formula and find the value of log of 1.1 base 10 plus log of 10 base 10 because these things were in multiplication. Now, you have already got the value of this log in the table because when you go further here, you will surely have somewhere the value of 1.100. Okay. So, in this way, after 10, whatever number you get, you can easily convert them to this kind of numbers, any numbers between this and into 10 raised to something. Now, 10 raised to something can be easily jumped from here and you can get this value and the values of this will be already in table and you can look for the table. So, so far we are clear that the table that we should made, uh, we should make should have the values starting from 1.001 .001 till 9.999. So, just imagine how many values are needed to be found. Okay. So, let us understand how he simplified these things and he arrived at the, uh, uh, arrived at the logarithmic table. So, Suppose you want to find the value of log of 6.4 to base 10. Now we will try to find one of the values and see what method has been followed. And he followed the same method to find all the numbers. Let us count how many numbers are there. If you try to count from 1 to 9.999, then the numbers will be approximately uh, from 1000 to 9999. Almost he tried to find the values of 9000 numbers. Okay. For 9000 numbers, he tried to find the value of logarithm. So, what must be the value of 0.5 in terms of logarithm? 0.75. So, we can write this like, like as you have written here root 10 base 10. What power should be raised to 10 to get root 10? The answer is 1 by 2. Therefore, this value is equal to 0.5. In the same way, what power should be raised to 10 to get? Uh, 0.75. Okay, means if we raise the power of 0.75 to uh, 10, we will get 10 raised to power 0 0.75, which is nothing but log of 10 raised to the power 3 by 4 base 10. And if you try to analyze this, you will get log of base 10 with 1000 raised to the power 1 by 4. 
Now, if you try to analyze, 5 raised to the power 4 is 625 and 6 raised to the power 4 is somewhere around 1296 and 1000 is lying between 5 and 6. So, 1000 raised to the power 1 by 4, if you are doing 625 raised to the power 1 by 4, you will get 5 and if you are raising the power of 1 by 4 to 1296, you will get 6. So, if you raise the power of 1 by 4 to 1000, you will approximately get the value of 5 point something something. So, 0.75 is approximately log of 5 point something something base 10. And you can easily see that 6.42 is on the this side of uh, this value. So, he tried multiple times the same thing without actually using the calculator. Imagine the amount of calculation and imagine the amount of hard work that has been put to develop the logarithmic table without actually using the uh, calculator. He did this type of iterations thousands of times, lakhs of times to reach the nearest value of log of 6.42. That is the only one thing that we have analyzed. Okay. He tried all the values. He tried how many values were there? He tried 9000 values starting from 1.001. 1.002 and so on till 9.999. He, he tried 9000 values and got the exact value of their logarithms in this way with, with the help of this kind of iterations. Okay. First trying to find out the value uh, whether it is lying between the halfway of this side or this side. Then again say, doing the same iteration when you have found that it is lying on uh, this side of 0 0.5. Then again the new space became 0 0.5 and 0 0.1. So far he tried to uh, get the nearest value and thus he found the log of 6.42 base 10 is equal to 0 0.8075. Or you can say it is approximately equal to this. What does that mean? Sir, when I have started log, I have seen that this is nothing but if I raise the power of 10, uh, if I raise this power to the base 10, I will approximately get 6.42. This is the meaning of this thing. Okay. So, I hope you all have, you all are able to understand that how did he arrive at all the values without actually using the calculator. He did this iterations number of times and try to shorten this space. As he tried to uh, shorten this space and it was almost same for this four decimals or almost it was near, then he found out and then he approximated this value as logarithm of some number. So that's how he tried to develop. Okay. So he decided to find the logarithmic value of each and every number in this way. But the problem was how do we store such a large data? How can you solve the logarithm of 9000 numbers in a piece of paper or in a booklet and whenever you want to find you should search for the logarithms of such value. So he tried to organize this 9000 terms in a simpler way, in, in the way that you can see your log table now. Okay, so let us see how did he organize. So when he tried to find the value of log 1, it was 0. You already know that. Okay, log of 1 base 10. Remember, we are talking everything with base, base of 10. Log of 1 base 10 is 0. Okay, what do we mean by that? Sir, what power should be raised to 10 to get 1 and that is 0. If you are saying log of 1.1 is <coughs> log of 1.1 base 10 is approximately equal to 0 0.0414, it means that 10 raised to approximate power of 0 0.0414, it will result out to be 1.1. So this is the approximate uh, meaning of this. So you can analyze this. If you are raising the power, uh, if you if you are if you want to find the value of log 2, it means that 10 raised to approximate value of 0 0.3010 is equal to 2. So in this way you can find out. Now he tried to analyze something. Let us see what he, what did he analyze. Okay. So he tried to find the values of logarithm uh, not going towards a much detailed decimal points. Okay. So what he did do is he tried to find the value till one decimal only. And he tried to find the value of 1, 1 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 and till now, he tried to analyze the further decimal points and the change in the logarithmic value when you were increasing the decimal points. Okay. So, first he tried with 1.2. After 1.2, when he tried to find the value of 1.21, it was like adding some number, adding some number to 0 0.0792. That is adding some number to the previous log. Okay. And you will be getting this kind of number. Okay. In that way, you can see that as you are increasing uh, 
the numbers of which logarithm you have to find okay that then the logarithm of that number is increasing by some difference okay it is increasing and if you try to analyze much more deep in much more decimal points in detail then you will be able to understand that after 1.21 you have to find the value of 1.211 and it is just a little increase in fourth decimal okay this was 0.028 this is 0.0831 what is being added it is added as 0.0003 okay when this is added to this kind of 0.0003 when this is added to this kind of number you will get this and to find the value to find the logarithm of 1.212 you need to add 0.00 Zero and four. If you add such a small number, you will get the logarithm of this. So he then tried to find out. Let me take the base of one of the logarithms as this, and I will write. I will note down. I will note down the value of what is to be added to this number. And thus, logarithm came. Logarithm table came to a much simplified way, and it was reduced, and it made the user easier to analyze and to look at the logarithmic table and find the value of log of each number. So in this way, he tried to analyze. Suppose if you analyze something in this, you will find that you just have to add a number with fourth decimal. You have to add the number in fourth decimal to get the value from 1.212 to 1.213. In this also, you just have to add 0.0003. Uh, okay. In this also, what should you add? You should add 0.0004. In this also, what should you add? You should add 0.0003. And you can analyze from here that when you are changing the third decimal, that is the last decimal, you just have to sum number. You just have to add some number at the fourth decimal. And when you are changing some number at the second decimal, not the third decimal, you are changing at second decimal, at that time, the addition could be much bigger. So what can we do is we can list out all the elements. We can list out all the elements till two decimal places and the, in third decimal places, we can just write the value of what is to be added to the uh, number which is having zero at the third decimal. Let us try to analyze the log table and you will understand it more comfortably. Okay, let us look at the log table. So far, we have understood that what type of numbers, what type of numbers of logarithms are required to us. Okay, so we have decided that we need logarithms from 1.1.001 to 9.999. Okay, and we all know that logarithm of this number with base 10 will be lying between 0 and 1. Okay. So it will be a decimal value having 0 point something something something. Okay. So this is how it is defined and the logarithmic table should, uh, should have this kind of values. So let us understand how is the logarithmic table. Uh, what does the logarithmic table represent and how can you find the value of this uh, numbers. Okay. So let us see that. So if you see here. If you see that we want to find logarithm of some numbers which are having four digits. One digit is before decimal point, one digit is before decimal point and three digits are after decimal point. So they have tried to make, uh, they have tried to uh, make the logarithmic table considering first two digits in this way. This is like one zero, one one, one two. What does this represent? Sir, this represents the first two digit of the number whose logarithm is to be found. As in this case, if you want to find logarithm of 1.357 base 10, the number that you should look for is 1.3 is the first two digits are 1 and 3. So you should look forward to this line. Okay, this is 1.3. This is 1.30. This is 1.31. Okay, this represent the next decimal digit. Okay. This is 1.31. Here it is 2. So this value is 1.32. This value is 1.33. 1.33 is logarithm. This is 1.34 logarithm. And this is 1.35 logarithm. So you can say that log of 1.35 with base 10 is equal to 0 0.1303. Okay. We all know that the value of logarithm. Uh, of uh, some numbers which are lying between 1 and 9.999, it will be a fraction, it will be lesser than 1 and greater than 0. 
so this all values are 0.2227 0.0294 okay this all values are after decimal point so you all know I, i hope you all have come to know that this is the value of logarithm of 1.35 to the base 10 1.35 to the base 10 is this value okay now if you add 7 in the last digit okay if you want to add 7 in the last decimal point then what can you do is then you add the mean difference what is this mean difference sir this mean difference represent the last digit this mean difference represent the last the third decimal digit uh, okay so this is 7 so what is 1.35 corresponding to 7 so this is 1.35 and at 7 we are having 23 so you have to add 23 to this number okay so 1303 plus 23 it is 1326 so you can say the value of 1.357 1.357's log is nothing but it is equal to 0.1326 i hope you must have understood till now let me give a, a detailed idea about the logarithmic table how it is made and how you can show it okay let us understand that so you must be clear by now that if you want to find the logarithm of some number it has four digits one digit before decimal one digit is before decimal and the three digits are after decimal to get the value of logarithm you should look for first two digits in this row okay then after that you should look for the second third digit okay or you can say the second decimal digit in this column okay and for the last decimal point digit or for the last uh, decimal point or for the last digit of this number you should add the mean difference to this value okay suppose if you want to find the logarithm of 1.7 you can easily get it as 1.70 and the value is 0.2304 if you want to get the value of 1.72 then you should look forward for the value of 1.7 and then here stop at 2 okay this is 2 so this is 1.72 value of logarithm of 1.72 so log of 1.72 will be 0.2355 you can easily get it if you want the value of 1.725 then after 1.72 you have to add the mean difference of 5 okay because your last digit is 5 so you have to add the mean difference which is near to 5 okay so what is what is what is shown here this is 1.72 okay whose value is around uh, 2355 okay then what you have to do is add the mean difference of 5 with it which is 12 so you have to add 2355 2355 plus 12 and it will result out to be 2367 okay so the value of logarithm of 1.725 will be 0.2367 okay i am just giving you an idea we'll practice two or three questions so that you understand in better way okay so don't worry about it this is just to show you that you can uh, in this log table you are having the value right from 1.0 starting from 1.01 1.02 1.03 1.04 1 till 1.09 and then uh, we are reaching 1.1 okay but 1.01 then we are not including 1.011 and for that what we have done is for the last digit you have to add 4 to this then for 2 uh, you have to add 8 to this okay so this is like if you want to find the value of 1.01 then this is the value if you want to find the value of 1.012 then 1.01 is till here and if you in the next digit is 2 so 1.012 will be we have to add the mean difference which is under 2 for the last decimal digit we have to see the mean difference and add it to this number okay so i hope it should be clear till now let us try and solve the other values other questions for this time uh, this kind of questions okay so let us understand how how can we do that let us solve one of the questions so that you understand better okay so suppose if you want to multiply this term with this term what you can do is you want to find the value of m okay you want to find the value of its multiplication what can you do is we can take the uh, we can take logarithm both the sides okay so this is equal to log of 2.675 into 5.721 with base 10 and it is equal to log of 
2.675 okay base 10 equal to uh, plus log of 5.721 with base 10 what do we mean by this sir we mean that this is a number such that if it is raised to 10 the value will be 2.675 what is this number? Sir, this number is when we will raise this number, this power to 10, we will get 5.721. Now, we need to look these values from the log table. Let us look from the log table and see what values we get. Okay. So, let us understand how do we find the value of logarithm of 2.675. So, first two digits, we have to look in this row. Okay. So, let us look at 26. Okay. Because the first two digits are uh, 2 and 6 okay so we can look here this is 2 6 okay and we have to look for the 7 number because our number is 2.675 so 2.6 is here now we should go for 7 so this is 9 this is 8 and this is 7 so 2.67 will be 2.67 is equal to 0.4265 okay you can see here 2.67 is nothing but it is equal to let me just zoom out yes so now you will be able to see it properly yes so 2.67 is here and the value is 4265 now what do we want we don't we don't want 2.67 we want 2.675 so for uh, the last digit of the of the number or you can say the last decimal uh, digit of the number you have to add the mean difference so for 2.67 it was okay and we have to add the mean difference under 5. So, you have to add 8 here. So, it will be like 4.2, uh, 4.265 plus 8. And the answer for this will be 4.273. Okay. So, you can say logarithm of 2.675 is nothing but 0 0.4273. Okay. So, I hope you are clear till now. Now, the next thing is we have to find the logarithm for 5.721. So, let us first go to the value of 57 so that we will be able to uh, find out. Okay. So, here you can see, yes, 57. You want the value of 5.721. So, 5.72 is here, which is 7574. This is 7574 and this is 5.72. But we want 5.721. Therefore, we have to add the mean difference of 1 to this number and this number will become 7575 and hence the value of 5.721's logarithm is 0 0.7575. So from now, from here we can see that this is equal to 0 0.7575. Now we have got the logarithm for both of this and we can easily add these values and you can get the answer. So let us go back and see and calculate this answer. Okay. So, you have got the logarithm of 2.675 base 10 as 0 0.4273 and logarithm of 5.721 base 10 as 0 0.7575. When you add both of this number, this will be equal to 1.1848. Okay. And what is this? This is nothing but sir, logarithm of m. What is logarithm of m? Sir, whatever multiplication is required, we are getting the logarithm of m base 10 as 1.1848. What does this mean? Sir, if I give the power of 1.1848 to the base 10, then I will get m. And what is m? It is the multiplication of this number. So, the required number, the required multiplication uh, answer is equal to 10 raised to the power 1.1848. So far, it was good. We were, we were, we are able to find the value of logarithms of every number. But going back should also be possible. Like I cannot simplify or I cannot approximate this kind of number that 10 raised to the power 1.1848. What is this exact value or what is this approximate value? So we need another table that is called anti-logarithm. We first found the logarithm of this number. Then we added it. Then we found the uh, logarithm of the required number. Okay. Now we again need to go back that we need to find the value that what if 10, 10 is raised to such a power, then what approximate value do we get? So, we also need anti-logarithm table. So, to find the anti-log of this kind of number, what should we do is, we know that the required number is equal to 10 raised to the power 1.1848. Uh, what can you do is, we can just split out this term that is 10 raised to 1 
into 10 raised to 0 0.1848. Uh, okay, this is in multiplication. Now you keep this 10 as it is and try to find the value of 10 raised to the power 0 0.1848 from the anti logarithm table. Okay, anti logarithm is nothing but reverse back. From this log table only, they have tried to find out anti logarithmic table. They have made this anti logarithmic table. Okay. So let us see the anti logarithm on anti logarithm of 10 raised to the power 0 0.1848. That means anti log of 0.1848. Let us try to have a look. While finding the anti logarithm of some number, please make sure that the number is converted to perfect decimal. That is, the number should not have any uh, number, any digit before decimal point. Like if you want to find the anti logarithm of 2.180, you already know 10 raised to the power 2.180. It is equal to 10 raised to the power 2 into 10 raised to the power 0 0.180. So you will have the value of anti logarithm only for this kind of number. This can be easily separated by yourself and you can find the value that this is 100. Okay. So if you want to find the anti logarithm of 3.1876, then you can find in this way that 10 raised to 3.1876. You want this value. What is anti logarithm? Anti logarithm is reverse of log. So you want the value as 10 raised to 3.1876. Now you can easily separate them 10 raised to 3 into 10 raised to 0 0.1876. So you just need to find the value of 10 raised to 0 0.1876. So in this way, you can do that. Okay. So let us go to the anti log table and find the value of 0 0.1848. This is just a hint that you can get. Okay, so maximum log tables, they do not have the value of one point something, two point something. They only have the value of their decimal points because one or two or three can be separated in this way. Okay, so I hope so far it should be clear. Okay, 0 0.1848. Let us go back to the anti log table and find the value of anti log of one point, uh, 0 0.1848. What does anti log mean? Anti log is 10 raised to the power that number. Okay, so let us go and find the anti logarithm of this number. Okay, so from here we will try to find the value, uh, the anti logarithm of 0 0.1848. Let us just get an idea that how does uh, this number will look. Okay, we want to find the value of 10 raised to the power 0 0.1848. This is lying between 10 raised to 0 and 10 raised to 1. So this is lying between 1 and 10. So it may look like 1 point something, 2 point something, 3 point something. That means the number will be between 1 and 10. So let us try and find the digits of those number. So for anti logarithm also, we have to do the same thing. For the first two digit, we have to go, uh, we have to select this row. Okay, so we have, to, we have selected for the first two digit, it is 0 0.18. Then we will go in the fourth column to get 0 0.184, which is 15283. Okay, it is 15283. Uh, it is 1528. Uh, okay, that is 4.184. Now, for the last digit, we have to go to the mean difference and add the mean difference. So, mean difference under 8 is 3. Okay, so 1528 plus 3, 1528 plus 3 is nothing but 1531. So, our anti logarithm of 0.1848 with base 10 is 1531. Now, we know that the number is lying between 1 and 10. So where should we put the decimal point? If we will put that uh, decimal point here, then it will be 0 0.1531 and it is not between 1 and 10. So our decimal point will be lying somewhere around 1.531. So we are sure that 10 raised to the power 0 0.1848 is nothing but it is equal to 1.531. So let us take this value of anti logarithm and put it in our calculation. So once we have got the anti logarithm of 10 raised to power 0, the anti logarithm of 0.1848, we are getting it as 1.531. And when this is multiplied with 10, we will get an approximate value of 15.31. That means the multiplication of these two numbers is equal to 15.31. Let us check with the calculator that we are getting the same thing or not. Okay. So let us try with the calculator. Suppose you want to multiply 2.67 5 into 5.721 and the value is approximately equal to 15.30 and you are getting 15.31. So we are getting nearly the same value uh, while we are doing our multiplication 
through logarithmic table just imagine this type of accuracy if you if you uh, multiply this by your own by the conventional method then it would take a longer time but you can approximate this value by using logarithmic table without actually using the calculator imagine uh, what a what a beautiful uh, discovery that would have been in 17th century when uh, in science lab in chemistry and physics lab people were finding very difficult to do the calculation and at that time log tables played a major role uh, in uh, simplifying things okay let us do one or two more examples so that you will be able to understand more suppose if you want to multiply 35.72 into 52.75 what can you do convert this multiplication to 3.572 into 10 raised to power 1 into 5.275 into 10 raised to power 1 now your job is to multiply 3.572 into 5.275 into 10 raised to the power 2 just try and multiply this both okay if we try and multiply this both we need to take the logarithm of this number so let us try to find the logarithm of 3.572 base 10 and logarithm of 5.275 base 10 let us go to the logarithmic table and get the value of 3.572's logarithm we have to find logarithm of 3.572 okay so first for the first two digit we have to look in this rows okay so this is 3.5 something okay 3.5 and we have to complete it at 7 so this is 9 8 and 7 so this is the value of 3.57 which is 5527 now for the last digit you have to see the mean difference and add it to 5527 okay let us see what is the mean difference this is 5527 and for the for 2 you have to add the mean difference of 2 so if you add 2 to this it will become 5529 hence the logarithm of 3.572 is 0 0.5529 we are ready with one of the logarithm let us try to find the other logarithm which was the other logarithm it was 5.275 okay so find the value of 5.275 so if you want the value of 5.275 First, we have to look in this for the first two digit that is 5, 2, okay. And it was 5.275. So, 5, 2 and then 7. So, we have to stop at this number. This is 5.27. And 5.275, we have to add 4 because for the last digit, we have to add 4 to this number. So, if you add 4 here, you will get 7, 2, 1, 8 plus 4. So, you will get 7, 2, 2, 2. Okay, 7, 3, 2 you will get. Okay. And the value will be 0 0.722. So, log of 5.275 is 0 0.722 and log of 5. Uh, log of 3.175 is uh, 3.572 is 5529. Okay, 0.5529. Let us take that value and uh, write that. Okay. So, we have got the logarithm of 3.572 and 5.275 in this way. Okay. The value of this is 0.5529. Okay. So, let me erase it and write it properly. This is nothing but 0.5529. Yes, okay. What does this mean? Sir, this means that logarithm of 3.572 is nothing but, uh, 3.572 base 10 is nothing but, if it is equal to 0.5529, then it is like if we raise the power of 0.5529 to 10, we will get 3.572. So, 3.572 can be written as 10 raised to the power 0 0.5529 and 5.275 can be written as 10 raised to the power 0 0.722. So, you can imagine by the basic definition of logarithm, we have converted this multiplication to addition of the powers of 10. And once you add it, once you add it, let us see what answer do we get. Okay, 9 plus, we, we get 10 raised to the power, 9 plus 2 is 1 and 1 from here, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 2 is 7 and 7 plus 5 is 12. So, you get 1.2751 into 10 raised to the power 2. Now, if you simplify it further, you will get 10 raised to the power 0 0.2751 into 10 raised to the power 3. You can find the value of this and this is equal to 1000. Now, for this, you need to look at the anti-logarithmic table. For this, 
we looked at log table and for this we will look at anti log table we want to go to the reverse thing okay in this we were trying to find out what should be what power should be raised to 10 to get this in this we will find out okay, what must be the value if this power is raised to 10 so let us go to the anti log table and find the value of this okay so we want the log anti log value of 0.2751 so for 0.2751, we should look at, for, for the first two digit, we will be looking at this row. So 0.27 will start from here. Okay, will, it will start from here. So 0.27, then we will stop at 5, which is 1884. And for the last digit, we will add the mean difference. So 0.275 is here, that is 1884. And we have to add the uh, mean difference, which is corresponding to 1. And the mean difference is almost 0. So the anti-logarithm of 0.2751 it is same as anti logarithm of 0.275 and it is approximately equal to 1884 now we all know that this value lies between 1 anti logarithm of means 10 raised to 0 0.2751 will rise uh, will uh, lie between 1 and 10 so this value should be 1.884 okay so we can take this value anti logarithm of 0 0.2751 or you can say 10 raised to the power 0 0.2751 is approximately equal to 1.884 by looking at the table. Okay. Now we can substitute that value in our multiplication and get the answer. So the anti logarithm of this thing or 10 raised to the power 0 0.2751 is approximately equal to 1.884. And if we multiply this by 1000, we will approximately get the value as 1884. So the approximate multiplication for this kind of number is 1884. Let us try and multiply it by calculator and see whether we are getting the correct answer or not. Okay. So what can we do? Let us try and multiply this. Yes. So if we want to multiply 35.72 into 52, sorry, it is into 52.75. We will get 1884.23. So imagine the accuracy. Okay. It is when we are multiplying 52.75 to 35.72, we are approximately getting 1884. Okay. And when we are calculating this kind of number, we are calculate, calculating our number in uh, terms of thousands, then 0.24 it doesn't matter for us. Okay. When we are uh, dealing with uh, 1000 or 1800 or this kind of numbers, 0.24 we can ignore it. So imagine the speed in which we can approximate this kind of numbers without actually using the calculator. These all things happened when the calculators were not invented. Let us see one more example of division and then uh, I hope you all have understood that how to find the logarithm and mainly you have understood the basic fundamental of logarithm and log table. So I hope you will be able to do all the calculations further by yourself. So one of the last questions we'll try to see so that you get the exact idea uh, of division and multiplication okay so let us do one division and uh, uh, see what happens okay so if we want to divide 52.75 with 35.72 you can first convert this to 3.7 3.572 and 5.275 so let us convert it to 5.275 upon 3.5 5, 7, 2 into 10 raised to 1 and into 10 raised to 1. So this gets cancelled out and we are just left with the division of 5.275 and 3.572. Let us try to find out that what is the power of 10th that should be raised to get this and what power should be raised to 10 to get this. And for this, what do we do? We look at the log table because we want to find a number such that if we raise that number, to the base 10 then we will get this so we want to find the value of log of 5.275 with base 10 we have already found this value in the previous question so we can say that from the previous uh, question log of 5.275 base 10 is nothing but it is equal to you can see from here that log of 5.275 is 0 0.722 so you can get this value as 0 0.722 and log of and you can say log of 3.572 log of 3.572 with base 10 is also uh, this is on this also we have calculated in last uh, example and it is 0 
So this value is approximately equal to 0 0.5529. So if we, what do, what do we mean by this? Sir, it is the, uh, it, it means that to get 5.275, we have to raise this power to 10. So what we can do is this division is same as equal to 10 raised to the power of 0 0.7222 upon 10 raised to the power of 0 0.5529. So now what we have to do is we need to subtract this. Okay. So we will get 10 raised to the power 0 0.722 minus 0 0.5529. So when you subtract this, you will get 10 raised to the power 0 0.1693. Now you have to find this value in the anti-logarithmic table. Let us check it what we have done. First of all, we would find the logarithm of this number and it, we have represented it as what it actually means that this number is equal to this and this number is equal to this and now when you can when you know that when the when something is in division and the bases are same you can subtract this value that's why while dividing the value you must have learned in your earlier classes that you subtract the logarithm of both of the values okay so now you have got the final answer as the division of this as 0 0.1693 now you have to look in the anti-log table that what is the approximate value of 10 raised to the power 0 0.1693. So let us go to the anti-log table and have a uh, and get the exact value. Yes, so this is logarithm. Let us go to the anti-log table. Okay. Yes, this is anti-logarithm. What value do uh, we need to consider? We want the anti-log of 0 0.0.1693. We want the anti-log of this number. So for the first two digit, we will look in this row. Okay. And here you can see this is 0.16. And after that, we want 93. So we will look for 0.16 and under the uh, number 9. So we know that value of 0.169 is equal to 1476. And for the last digit, that is 3, we need to add the mean difference. So the mean difference here is 1. And if you add this two number, this will become 1477. Now we all know that 10 raised to 0 0.1693 is lying between 1 to 10. Okay. So this value will be 1.477. So we know that 10 raised to 0 uh, 10 raised to 0 0.1693 is nothing but 1.477. So let us go back and put this value and see if we are getting the correct answer or not. So we can easily find this value as 1.477. So you don't need to do this. Uh, you don't need to do this kind of longer division, and you can easily find out that the value of this division is nothing but 1.477. Now, what if this is reversed? What if the reciprocal of this is asked? Let, let us see if you are asked the reverse division. What if you get negatives in exponent? Okay. So if you are asked to divide 35.72 with 52.75. Then first of all, the first thing we have to uh, do the same thing. You can convert. You should convert it in the uh, digit only one digit before decimal point. So it is 3.572 into 10 raised to power 1 upon 5.275 into 10 raised to power 1. This gets cancelled out and you need to find the division of 3.572 upon 5.275. So therefore, you need to get the logarithm of both of this. Logarithm of both of this we already know. Log of 3.572 base 10 and logarithm of 5.275 base 10 are uh, we already know this value. Let us take it from the previous example. 3.572 is 0.5529. It is 0.5529 and this is 0 0.77 uh, 0 0.722. Okay, so 3.572 log of 3.572 is this. That means if we raise the power of this to 10, we will get that. Okay, so you can write this as 10 raised to the power 0 0.5529 upon 10 raised to the power 0 0.722. Okay, now you all know that if it is in division, we have to subtract it. So if we try to subtract it, we will get 10 raised to the power 0 uh, minus of 0 0.169. So, so far it is okay. How do you look this into logarithmic table? So, here I would like to explain you something. What you should do is, you. so what you can do is to convert this into positive decimal, you, you can take one example. Suppose if you want to find the value of minus 0 0.5, you can add one and subtract one. 
what happens if you add one if you add one this becomes 1 minus 0 0.5 and it becomes 0 0.5 and minus 1 is remain uh, is remaining here and you can get this in this way okay what if you are having minus 1.5 if you are having minus 1.5 just add 2 and subtract 2 and 2 minus 1.5 will become 0 0.5 and minus 2 minus 2 will be uh, minus 2 will come from here what happens if you do this you will have this you will have 10 raised to the power minus 0 0.5 as 10 raised to the power 0.5 minus 1 now you can separate this you can separately calculate 10 raised to the power 0 0.5 and 10 raised into 10 raised to the power minus 1 you already know how to manipulate this same way in this case you can convert it to 10 raised to the power minus 0 0.5 plus uh, uh, 10 raised to the power 0 0.5 minus so what you can do is 10 raised to the power 0 0.5 you can calculate, uh, calculate separately into 10 raised to the power minus 2 you can do separately either you can put 100 in the denominator or here you can put 10 in the denominator or if it is a large number then you can uh, keep it in this way only. suppose if it is large number like 23 or 24 then you keep this in this way only and you get the NT logarithm of 10 raised to the power 0 0.5 so in the same way if you want to do in this way what number should you add or subtract you should add one number more than the number that is appeared here before decimal point. If it is minus 23.5, then you should add 24 and subtract 24. If you add 24, you will get 0 0.5 minus 24. Now you know to deal, deal with this kind of number. Okay. So here it is 0. So you should add 1 and minus 1. Okay. So as soon as you add 1, you get it as 10. So you get from here point. 0 0.8307 minus 1 okay so now you what what you need to let me just erase it from uh, the down part so that you will be able to understand more correctly yes so now from here you just need to find you just need to find the anti logarithm of point 8307 and rest of the th things you can deal it by yourself so it becomes 10 raised to the power 0 0.8307 into 10 raised to the power minus 1 now you have to look in the anti log table to get the value of 10 raised to the power 0 0.8307 and you know that very well to find this value okay so i will try to write that directly from here and so that you will be able to understand and the value of that is 6.672 and here it is there uh, and here uh, 10 raised to minus 1 is already present so finally your value will be this thing divided by 10 and it is equal to 0 0.6672 so i hope you will be able to understand if you are asked to find the reciprocal of this and i hope you will be comfortable of uh, dealing with the numbers if negatives are there in exponents okay and what you can do is this is equal to 0 0.6672 you can use your calculator also and uh, try to simplify and you will get approximately the same value let us i hope you all have understood much more about logarithm and its table now let us see where it will be used for for je and need okay because uh, for your je main plus advanced and as well as need you are not allowed to take the log table with you so without log table how do you deal with this kind of numbers okay so for je and need you need to remember some of the logarithm value and uh, if you remember this much it will be easy for you okay and as we are using in some integration formula and all we are using natural logarithm that is bs we are taking as e approximate value of e will be 2.71 and also we are taking bs as 10 sometimes okay so you need to remember these four values maximum time this this works as a currency okay suppose if someone says you uh, give me 37 rupees you don't have a coin or you don't have a currency note of 37 rupees but with other different notes you can make 37 rupees in the same way if some if someone asks you that find the logarithm of 4 you know some rules you know the rules that it is 2 square so you can convert it as log of 2 square log of 2 square base 10 and you can make this 2 jump here so it will become 2 log 2 base 10 now you already know the value of this so you can uh, identify you can calculate the value of 2 into this thing okay suppose if someone asks you log of 15 okay if someone asks you log of 15 then you need to uh, you just need to simplify it and find the value of log of 3 plus log of 15 okay uh, log of 5 okay because this 15 is log of 3 into 5 so log of 3 plus log of 5 will become 15 
So in this way, you just have to remember some values of logarithm and that would be useful for you. I, I would suggest you to find the value of log 5 also base 10 and here it will be also log 5 uh, base e. So try to get this value from uh, on your own and then you can just remember these values and these values will be useful. Why? Because these are all prime numbers. If you see, these are all prime numbers. So every number will be some or the other multiplication of prime numbers and you can convert all the numbers to this kind of number, uh, this kind of prime factorization or prime numbers. Then you can find the logarithm of all the other numbers easily. Okay. Suppose if someone asks you log of 13 base 10, then you need to look at the log table. Okay. But for J and need for simpler calculation, they may not go outside this range. Okay. If you remember this much formula, then that, that will be okay. That will be enough for you all. Okay. So suppose if you want to calculate, uh, suppose you want to calculate log of 10 base uh, 2, uh, let log of 10 base E. Then what is the value of this? This value can be easily approximated by log of 2 base E plus log of 5 base E. So try to convert everything into prime factorization and then you can add it and you can find the value of logarithm of, uh, of which you have known by adding or subtracting. Okay. So I hope you all have understood for J and need. Try to remember this kind of logarithms. Okay. The other thing that uh, people ask is how to do the base changing. Okay. If some values you are getting uh, with base 10 and you are getting some value with base E, then how do you manipulate it? We use base changing theorem for that. Okay. Uh, we have already seen in our logarithmic rules that what is base changing theorem. If it is written as log of A base B, then you can convert both of them into some other base by log of A base X upon log of b base x. So base goes here and the number goes here. In the same way what you can do is if it is given as log of x base e, it is given in natural logarithm, then you can just convert it as log of x base 10 upon log of e base 10. Now the value of log of e base 10 is nothing but 0 0.4342. So and here log of x base 10 is there. Okay. So if you want to convert log of e, x base e into log of x base 10, just multiply it with 0 0.4342. Okay. You can easily identify from here. If you, uh, if you move this, uh, multiply, uh, zero, this 0 0.4342 to that side, it will be multiplied and you can easily get. What if something is given with base 10 and you want to convert it into natural logarithm with base E? So what you can do is, in this also you can convert by base changing theorem log of X base E upon log of 10 base E. What is log of 10 base E? It is 2.303. Okay. You just... Uh, you just uh, send this 2.303 on this side and it will become a, it will become a multiplication. Okay. So if something is given as log of x base 10, just multiply it with 2.303 and you will get log of x base e. Okay. So I hope you are you are able to understand. If you want to convert from base 10 to natural log, you just have to multiply 2.303. And if you want to convert natural log to base 10 log, then you just have to multiply 0.43. I hope you all have understood this. This is a very beautiful discovery or you can say a very beautiful uh, thing that uh, John Napier and Henry Briggs have discovered and made, made the calculations much more easier before the era when calculator was uh, invented. Okay, So before calculator, this logarithmic table may, uh, played a major role and uh, many of the discoveries and many of the scientific research because when you go to any of the chemistry lab or physics lab, you may come across a lot of calculations. And at that time when there were no calculators, it was very difficult to calculate this kind of, to multiply and divide this kind of uh, bigger things. Okay. But this was the basic funda. They spent around 20 years of time to discover this. Okay. They spent around 20 years of time to make the logarithmic table in such a beautiful way, in such a simpler way. And you can imagine they have uh, given their whole life behind this. Okay. So this is it. Such a beautiful thing of logarithmic table we are using in our day-to-day -day life. And uh, you can see that the fundamental of this logarithm is very, very beautiful. Okay. So thank you for watching this and uh, I hope you all have understood it. Okay. Thank you very much.